Hello everyone! It is time for part 4 of the perfect Fallout 4 playthrough. Sorry for the delay, real life stuff has been keeping me very busy, but I appreciate all of the support and the channel is still somehow growing. Thank you for the nice comments, I do read all of them. And with that out of the way, let's get into part 4. Now that we have commerce set up in Sanctuary, let's shift gears a bit and focus on our combat viability by gearing up with some awesome weapons. So what are the best weapons we can get? Remember we barely left Sanctuary thus far, so availability is a major factor. The first weapon we're going to pursue is the Righteous Authority. To get this weapon, we'll fast travel to the Grey Garden waypoint we picked up earlier and tune into Military Frequency AF95, which will activate the Fire Support quest. Follow the marker and help the Brotherhood clear out the ghouls. After that, pick up the follow-up quest from Paladin Dance and follow them over to Arcjet Systems. Finish the quest here and you will be rewarded with the Righteous Authority. Now if I had to pick the most valuable weapon in the entire game, this would be it. This is especially good for a high luck crit build, but the legendary effect is solid regardless of your specific build. The main thing that makes this weapon so incredible is the customization. Laser weapons can be customized as pistols, rifles, automatic pistols, or automatic rifles. I'm going to be using the standard rifle version, but if you're planning a pistol build, this weapon can certainly hold you over until you get access to the stronger pistols much later in the story. Next we'll head down to Vault 81. Outside of Vault 81 there is sometimes a vendor named Cricket. If Cricket isn't there, have a seat and wait around until she shows up. Got a hankering for a melting face? Then I'm your girl. She sells the powerful Spray and Prey Explosive Submachine Gun. Explosive rounds do area of effect damage, making them ideal for dealing with condensed enemies. Though it is situational, this weapon will come in handy. Next, head inside of Vault 81 and either give three fusion cores or talk your way past the guards. Just inside, there is a vendor named Alexis Combs who sells one of the most revered legendary weapons called the Overseer's Guardian, along with her other insanely expensive armor pieces. This is an automatic combat rifle with a two-shot effect, which fires two rounds simultaneously. Unfortunately, the second projectile is not affected by the increased power from mods, but it is still a massive increase in damage at the cost of ammo efficiency. Now that we have three incredible weapons, let's make them even more incredible by modding them. Currently I have rank 3 science and rank 3 gun nut, so I'm able to mod them pretty well. For spray and prey it already comes very well modded, but I ended up with the powerful receiver, short light barrel, recoil compensating stock, large quick eject drum, standard sights, and I swapped out the suppressor for a muzzle brake. I will not be using this weapon for stealth, so the suppressor is not necessary. For the Righteous Authority, I added the overcharged capacitor, improved sniper barrel, recoil compensating stock, reflex sight, and the fine-tuned beam focuser. This will be my weapon of choice when things get messy. When I get deeper into the luck and agility perks, I will probably remod this weapon to use less AP and it will become my crit generator. The main weapon I will use now is the Overseer's Guardian. I'm going to convert it from an automatic weapon to an incredible stealth sniper weapon. However, two key mods are not available at Gun Nut Rank 3, which are the Suppressor and the 308 Receiver. Fortunately, Smiling Larry's got what I want. I was able to pick up a combat rifle with a 308 receiver and another combat rifle with a suppressor. I stripped those powerful mods off of those weapons and attached them to my Overseer's Guardian. Now the mods on the weapons he sells are based on your character level. My character was at level 34 when I found these weapons and that was the first I had seen either the 308 or the suppressor mod so that might be the earliest you'll see them from a vendor. Stripping mods off of weapons is a great way to increase the power of your weapons even if you aren't a crafter. And in the end my Overseer's Guardian has a 308 receiver, long ported barrel, recoil compensating stock, medium quick eject mag which I'll eventually upgrade to a large one, a long recon scope, and a suppressor. Now this is on par with some of the best possible sniper rifles in the game. While there are very strong weapons out there, especially in the DLCs, the availability of these three weapons along with the mods make them extremely overpowered for the point in the game we are at. And they will definitely carry us until we're ready to start some more focused legendary item farming. Thank you all again for watching, be sure to like and subscribe. 
I'm almost up to 2,000 subscribers, which is crazy to me. So until next time, remember to survive in the wasteland. You gotta be efficient.